Hi everyone, it's Nina and I'm here today showcasing stamps from Whimsy Stamps. If you've never heard of them, they are a red rubber stamp company that has so many really cute and playful images from anything from people to critters and everything in between. I'm going to be using some of their critter images today. This is the Two T Christmas Tales stamp set and I'm going to be using this to do a Copic colored scene card. So here I've got the stamp mounted onto my Misty stamping tool. I've taken the black foam piece out of the middle of the Misty because we don't need that for this particular stamp. Um, the foam piece that goes inside of the Misty, that's for when you're stamping with clear stamps. And because the cling stamps already have that uh, foam piece mounted onto the back side of them, you don't need that insert to the Misty. So here I'm stamping this with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I'm double stamping it to get a nice crisp impression just because the Memento Tuxedo Black ink has a tendency to be a little on the muted side. So here I'm coloring my images with my Copic markers. I'm using some reds here to do my coloring for the hats. I'm starting off with my lightest color and then I'll start gradually working onto the darker colors. I'm keeping a light source coming from the top left corner of all my images. If you don't want to work with a light source, you could definitely just color this however way you want. But I enjoy working with light sources because this helps bring your images to life. So this is why I'm going ahead and adding in that light source. It's not too hard to figure out, just kind of get an, um, an idea in your head of where the light would be coming from and where it would be casting shadows. It's quite easy to do once you kind of think about it. I've got all the colors that I'm using listed on the side of the screen so you can replicate these color combinations if you like. Here I'm bringing in my darkest color and I'm blending this out with my mid-tone and then I'll go ahead and further blend it out with my lightest color. And when you're working with reds, always remember that these colors are very easily bleed up within each other. So you're going to want to make sure you give some drying time, just a couple of minutes, uh, in between each coloring. Uh, that way you won't have as much bleeding when you go ahead and add more layers on top of the reds. Reds and pinks are one of those colors that just bleed so easily. So here I'm working on the candy cane. This is a smaller image, so I'm not going too detailed with the blending, just kind of adding some darker lines along each side of the candy cane to give a highlight in the center. And just kind of fixing up some of my shading on the hats here, making sure I get them the way I like. And you can color these images with any kind of coloring medium that you prefer. I like working with Copics best, so this is what I've chosen to use. But if you wanted to, you could go ahead and use watercolor, you could use colored pencils, anything you really feel like uh, using, you could use to color these images. They're very fun to color. They have a lot of nice crisp lines, and the images are a good size for coloring practice. So I'm adding in a slightly darker color. This is R89, and I'm just adding it into the darkest portions of the image. I wanted it to have a little bit more contrast because I like to add contrast into my coloring. It's something that helps bring your image to life, so I've added in a bit darker red. I'm using T markers here. These are toner grays, and I'm adding some dot along, uh, dot technique along the uh, hat brims and little pom-poms just to kind of give them a texture. You don't want to go too dark with these, uh, otherwise they'll start to look a bit dingy and they'll lose that white color. But if you add it just gradually and in just the little edges of the image, you'll end up getting a nice shadow effect and also have a bit of texture, which will make your image not only look white, but also have a nice texture to it. So I'm blending this out with my uh, T0 marker, and I'm using T4 along the very, very edges of my uh, little images here just to kind of give them a bit of a shadow doing those same colors on the candy cane. For the mouse, I'm using E31, E35, and also E57. I'm just adding in some shading to him. I'm gonna do some dot technique along his body as well, just to give him a bit of a texture. For the jingle bell, I'm using E50, uh, Y21, and YR23. I'm keeping all of the lighting again, like I said, coming from the top left. So all of the shadows would be along the bottom right and just the right general side of each image. And 
And now I'm working on the bunny. The bunny is done in warm grays. I'm using the warm gray double zero, warm gray one, and then warm gray three. I'm using warm gray three very sparingly just to kind of add some very deeper shadows along the very edges of the bunny. But I'm generally leaving all the coloring to W1 and W00. I'm making sure I also leave a nice big white highlight along the portion of his body there. That way it gives him a little bit more of a dimensional look and also gives that illusion that he's white and just kind of having cat shadows casted around him. So here I'm taking R11. This is a little bit of a reddish peach color, or a pinkish peach color I should say. And I'm using that to add some blush to the bunny and also some pink areas on his body. I also use that same color for the mouse. And I'm also bringing in a little bit darker pinkish peach color. And I'm just adding that in very small areas just to not overpower, but just to add a little bit of a rosy touch to this bunny and help him have a little bit of color. So I'm kind of touching up some of my images here. And now I'm bringing in uh, Warm Gray 5 and Warm Gray 7. And I'm adding in deeper shadows along where the light would be casting shadows. This is going to help give your image more dimension and also pop off the page a little bit more. As you can see, I'm using it very sparingly, just kind of along those very, very edges of each image. And this will help pull in those shadows and bring that image to life and make the lighter areas much, much lighter and more brighter. And it's a really cool way to add dimension and uh, realism to your images. And again, if, if this kind of coloring isn't your type of thing, you could easily color this with just some simple coloring and shading. But I really enjoy adding a lot of depth and dimension to my images. So I'm going to go ahead and keep adding in uh, more shadows and dimension to this as well. For the bunny's tail, I've flicked in some of that R11 color, and then I'm also using some more of those toner grays just to kind of flick in some of that gray color and give the bunny's tail a little bit of a texture. For the ground, I'm using a mixture of light blues and also some grays, and I'm going to go ahead and add some dot technique along the bottom underneath the animals just to kind of give the snow a bit of a texture. I ended up uh, completely doing the whole entire bottom portion of the card with these colors and just kind of extended all of that uh, ground element all the way across the bottom portion of the card. It helped ground the images a little bit more and I liked how it ended up working out. All I did was took a black pen and just kind of added in those cross hatch lines that are underneath the critters and I just did that across the entire portion of the bottom card. I'm using a white gel pen to add white dot accents around my images. Just kind of helps give a little bit of an extra highlight and some bright white color in there. And it really adds a little bit of texture to your imagery. Okay, so now I'm working on the sentiment. When I was working on the sentiment, because this is a red rubber stamp, I can't see through it. So I'm stamping it onto some clear acetate to make sure I get it lined up correctly. Then I'll just move that acetate aside and re-ink my stamp and I'll go ahead and press it down onto the paper. This will help you make sure that you get the image in the right spot and it's not crooked when you go ahead and stamp it down. So I'm using VersaFine Black Onyx ink. It's a sticky ink so I'm going to go ahead and be able to add some clear embossing powder over top just to give this sentiment a little bit of an extra dimension. Using a mask that I've created, just stamp this onto a piece of paper and tape it down onto my workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and take some uh, cracked pistachio and evergreen bow distress ink and just add a little bit of sky around the critters. I'm not going too far and I'm not going too heavy. I'm keeping it very light. I'm actually doing more of a pouncing technique to kind of fade it out. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that color in there to help give the animals a little bit of a dimensional look. It also grounds them a little bit more, which I liked doing. To touch up any areas, I'm using a uh, YG41 marker and also a BG34. 
and that just kind of mix, uh, adds in any color where the ink blending tool might have missed, and it blends together really, really nicely with that cracked pistachio and evergreen bow. Here I've got a stencil from Simon Says Stamp. This is the Falling Snow stencil. And I'm gonna be taping this to my paper here. I'm gonna be using some Ranger texture paste to apply some snow across the entire portion of this card. As you can see, I've not masked off any of the critters. I want the snow to go in front of them because if it really was snowing, the snow would be in front of the critters. So I'll just remove the mask and the tape and there you go, you can see our texture paste is drying. I also ended up taking some enamel accents and applying it over top of some of the snowballs just to kind of give a little bit more extra dimension and texture. Here I've got some score tape. This is quarter inch score tape. And I'm adding this onto my craft A2 size card. And I'm doing this at a diagonal. I'm not lining it up uh, perfectly or anything. I'm just kind of placing the tape down. And I'm gonna be using some deco foil. This is the opal color. I'm gonna be putting my score tape, I've taken all the release paper off of it. I'm gonna put this uh, deco foil down, face down. I'm gonna put the uh, paper on top. And then I'm gonna put this into a parchment paper sandwich and feed it through my laminator. Once it comes through the laminator, you'll have that deco foil attached to the score tape and that'll create a beautiful foiled striped background for our card. So here you can see it's been foiled completely. We're gonna take that foil off and what remains are the stripes that were on the uh, tape. So here I've got my panel. I've also cut down some red cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to be layering this behind my little panel here. It's just as a little pop of color. Also match the reds that I used perfectly. I'm taking some uh, red craft foam and I'm going to attach it to the back side. This will give it some dimension. And then I'll tape this down to my card base. To add an extra bit of sparkle and shine, I'm using some Wink of Stella Glitter and some Glossy Accents. And I've applied that to portions of my images here, just to kind of give it a little bit more extra sparkle and shine. And that's going to do it. So I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to stop over at my blog where you can get more information about Whimsy Stamps and also the products used that I've used in today's project. And thanks again so much for stopping by. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and we'll see you again soon.